Hey guys. Um, first, let me congratulate you. Um, if you haven't thought about it this way before, but think, think about it today. Uh, seniors' last day of classes was yesterday. That means you, uh, all of you who are juniors, are now the upperclassmen of the school. Um, you, it's We talk about this every year with juniors, um, but today is really the first day of your being um, the new leaders and top of the class. So congratulations for getting this far. <clears throat> Excuse me. We, uh, we're going to do something today. Great story, this thing, an animal hunt. And uh, we're going to work on two parts of it. One, I know you all did the verbs, and I handed them back to you. I, I gave the grades for it. Uh, what I did on this was I recopied what should have been correct, and I want to double double check your translations with you. Um, you don't, so you don't have to open the old one up again. We're just going to do it together. Um, so let's start with that. Make sure you've got this new version open. Uh, it's got the words in the uh, title at the top. Past this, it's. Hopefully you've opened it up with, uh, it's in the same assignment thing we had today with uh, the video, this video. So the word pestis should be at the end. Uh, in case you haven't guessed that, the word pestis means, what do you think? Yeah, it means like plague. Um, it's the word the Romans used when there was a terrible plague, the pestis. So this is our pestis version of the handout. Notice uh, two things. I've done the verbs. Also, uh, there's a fill-in-the-blank translation, and we're going to start working on that today. Okay, so let's fill this in. Uh, you guys are great on this for the most part. Whitaker word's very helpful. It didn't help most people with this one down here. The fact that the verb, the final verb, consecuta est, is from consecu or. And you would have had to notice that. They would just say that it was... Uh, passive in form, because that's the way the computer did it. But because it's deponent, it's passive in form, active in meaning. So it was deponent. We'll start with that one. Um, it's feminine. Some of you guys noticed that, the consecuta. Uh, but we're going to make it just it for now. It, it's perfect. So something uh, did happen. Remember, it, it's not going to be, it has been followed, but it literally it has followed or it followed. So... You can, can or cannot put that word in. All right, to the top. Soon, from soon, uh, almost everybody had that. They are. Negat. Negat is the verb to deny. So you said it's third singular. So we're going to just put in he's for now. Uh, he denies. Potest. Again, third singular. He sure it. Does what? You know, is able. Essay shows up twice in the story. It's the infinitive. You know, good. You guys had almost... It, it, you guys are so good on this. To be. And notice we're putting them down in a way that we can use them in the translation. Laniator. Now, Laniator had a few meanings. And I saw you guys uh, wrote them down. Um, it's just such a good word. It means to tear to pieces or to mangle something. Um, if you look in our story in the translation I have here, have up here, um, both will work. Uh, they're really great. Uh, so it's passive though. So it's he or it, it's present, is mangled, or you could have is torn to pieces. And boy, I can't wait to get to that part of the story. The next one, transverberator. You told me it was present passive again, third singular. So it's going to be very similar. He or it is something. If you went up to it and looked at the verb, it means to pierce through. Um, the words trans is through. Werber is to uh, pierce. So to pat, pierce through. Now it's happening to the person because it's passive. He is pierced through. He 
You know, it'd be like if you took a sword and stabbed through someone or an arrow and shot it through the head or something like that, you know. Uh, with this tea. It's wrong on mine here. Oops. Uh, that should be perfect. Sorry. Fix that right now, if you would. I screwed it up. So please fix that one. It's perfect. All those are perfect. Thanks. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, it's you. It's the only one that's second singular. So it's you did perfect C. Or you could have you saw. That would work. Next perfect, spectacmus. Now, specto is to observe or watch. So it's now first plural, we, just like the one after it. We did watch. Or we did observe. We did mus. Now it's again like we did see. We did see or we saw. Fuit remembers from soon. Third singular, he or it. Now, has been is probably your best translation, but it could be uh, it was is sometimes the way people translate it. Extidos is the toughest one here. Um, if you remember what the verb meant up here, to step forth, to emerge, arise, or exist. Um, that's going to, excuse me one second, I'm just going to close this and open it again. Um, what could that mean? Well, when we have a verb like, um, existo, and we have, <clears throat> excuse me, that many possibilities, we have to think in the context of the sentence. Now, it's going to show up, let me find it in the text here for you. Um, right here in line six. Um, and I'm going to use it right here. So we're going to be, we're going to use existed. It existed. Um, but you could have used showed up. I just happen to use it that way in the text. Um, all right. Make sure you've got all that done. When you submit this, you've got to have that part all finished. All these have got to be in here. All right. Let's look, look at the translation. I'm going to get you going, and I'm going to ask you to finish it. So here's how we go. Um, what's the background of the story? We hear that our poor friend, uh, if you read the whole story, Cicero... It's such a great story. Poor Cicero. Um, he, uh, there are some games that would be held in honor of some friend's family or something. Um, and he's been to so many games throughout his lifetime. And he is absolutely bored to tears, like just rolling his eyes like, oh, my God. This absolutely stinks. Why? Well, he's seen so many of them. And can you imagine that? You know, you and I think about going to a gladiatorial show. You'd be like, oh my gosh, how great is this? How crazy is it? He, this, he's been to so many of them. And in this story, he's been describing to his good friend, a lot of his letters are to good friends, He's describing his friend, he goes, oh my gosh, this thing went on and on and on. And uh, day after day. Um, and finally, in order to make this great festival incredible, the rather than just looty, as you saw in today's um, check-in thing, instead of just regular games, the guy's going to who's paying for it all, decides he's going to do winationes, hunts, animal hunts. And this is supposed to be the culmination of 
all of these of the whole festival. And we're going to find out, get a sense of how much money was involved in these things. Because this isn't a one-day event. This is an event that's going to last several days. And it's going to slowly build up every day. So let's hear Cicero and his complaint about what we would have considered like one of the amazing events in our trip to Rome. So I have this. The blank are hunts. Okay, so let's try to eliminate the words that aren't there. Sunt are venationes, hunts. So the word we're looking for then is relinquai. Okay, so how would I do that? I just try to narrow down the the English to the Latin, and I look up here and I find the word. The rest, or the remaining ones, are hunts. He then says, two a day for five days. Well, binai per dies quin, and I'm just trying to eliminate words, quinque. Well, binai we get binary, you could guess that one. I don't even have to look it up. Per dies quinque, through. And benai literally means two a day. Per dies quinque, for five days. That's pretty simple. He then says, magnificent. I look up here. Oh, magnifici. No one denies. Nemo negat. Great, huh? Okay, next one has a blank. So we know that we're talking about this section right here. But what is able to be a blank delight for a person? So it gets philosophical here. The word for but was said. But what? And in this case, what is quai? What is able? What's the verb for to be able? Potest. To be, oh, to be, oh, we got to be right here. To be a blank delight for a person. Okay, so I look, I've got three words left. How many has got to be for the person? The word for delight is up here, delectatio. So that was this one here. So the word you've got to translate is politio. What does it mean? Well, it's right here. What is able to be a refined or polished delight for a person? And so we start to see where our man's going. And what it seems like he's trying to do is make you ask the question, what, what is it that's really the kind of thing a refined educated, um, wealthy man should really be delighting in. And here's the parts you're going to do. And we're going to translate the whole thing. When either, here are your words, cum out. And here's what's going to fit. Oops, excuse me. All of that goes here. When either that happens, or a glorious beast is pierced through by something. And that's got to be this line. So you got to figure out which one words are said, which ones are implied. Now we go to the next part. What, however, if they must be seen? Quae tamen. What, however, see widendum sunt. If, and remember, there's our a really cool thing. This is a passive paraphrastic. Do you remember that? 
It's when something must be done. What have if they must see, if they must be seen? Did you see? And the word often should be in there. I left it out. What, however, if they must be seen? Did you see? Nor we, Aquinos, nor we, who watch these things, qui haec septimus, did we see anything? Qui quam widomus. The word you need to fill in there is that. Okay, so far so good. We now have just these parts here. And you only are looking for uh, five words. Do what I did. Finish this translation. Your hardest part is this first part right there. Um, and submit it to me um, for grade today. Uh, it's not outside of your abilities, guys. You certainly can do this. Um, I don't even have a problem if you call a friend and you talk it through. No big deal. I just want to make sure that you find out what this story is all about. What is it that Cicero is trying to tell you in this text that he found upsetting or appalling by the event? All right, guys, finish this up. Submit it to me. Um, we are so close to the